Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about external combustion. So this was the um, the predecessor of internal combustion. And you've all heard of an external combustion engine. It is a steam engine, of course. That sounded really stupid. Hi, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about external combustion. So, we all should know by now that petrol engines, diesel engines, and piston engines, and wankel engines, and so on and so forth, uh, are known as internal combustion engines. Um, but, it begs the question then, what is an external combustion engine? Because obviously, if it was just internal, then we would just call it an engine. We wouldn't call it an internal if there wasn't an external. So... The first thing we have to do is, well one will basically um, outline what an external combustion engine is, so that's a steam engine. A steam engine is an external combustion engine. Which then begs the question, you know, you call it a train or a steam engine, you call the whole thing an engine, but it's actually um, in engineering what we actually call the engine part. So with a steam engine, you have a boiler, you have some lines, some high pressure lines going to a cylinder, you have a piston inside with a rod that's eventually attached to a wheel with a counterweight like so. And we have a pivot here and we have seals either end like so, I'll put a seal there and then we obviously have our seals for our actual piston. And then our line comes in here, and then we have another line comes here, and this is a very simplistic version of a steam engine. So what we have is we have our boiler. I should like that. And then we have our cylinder with our piston, our rod, and we have, usually have linkages in there. It's usually a crosshead bearing and stuff like that. And then we have our wheel. So what we have to do here is we have a little fire going on here with some coal. We have our lumps of coal. So this is the, you know, the very basic version of what a steam engine is. So you have your coal, you burn your coal, which is your fuel. This produces heat, the heat goes into the boiler, it warms the water. The water then starts to boil, hence the word boiler. And then this is then squirted down these lines into your cylinder here. And the pressure rises in this side and it pushes the piston and then you shut this one off, send steam into this one, it expands, it applies a force, pushes the piston back this way, so you get this backwards and forwards motion. And we can turn that backwards and forwards motion, and I really shouldn't put that there, I should put a line there, like so. You have a crosshead bearing and what have you. And basically this is like your con rod and this is your wheel. And away you go, you've got lo excuse me, locomotion. But in engineering terms, we call this the engine. And the engine is the section of this mechanical device that actually extracts energy from one source into mechanical motion. So this is a mechanical motion converter. If we stick some kind of energy source in here, in this case it's steam. So we'll put that in, that's steam. We are using steam as our energy transfer fluid. So we're burning our coal, heat is coming out, heat is energy, that's raising the pressure and the temperature of the water. The, we're using this water as a fluid to transport the energy from this burning coal into this cylinder. So this section here is our engine, because this is where mechanical work is extracted from a process. So this is our engine, and as you can see, the combustion side of it is here. Well, this is external to the engine, so this is what we called an external combustion engine. At the time, it was just an engine. But as soon as, as, soon as we realised there was a problem with this, then we invented the internal combustion engine. So what is the problem with this? Where can we make this entire system better? Well, what we want to do is we want to transfer the energy to this engine, this engine side of things. But if we burn our fuel here... It heats up the air around it, 
it heats up the boiler. So we're losing energy in heat in the boiler. We're losing energy in the steam lines as heat and pressure, because we're pressurizing. That's a good point, actually, with the pressure as well. We're pressurizing the steam lines. We're also pressurizing the boiler. It's a pressure system. So we're losing loads of energy to the air. That's another one. We're losing energy to the air because the boiler's hot. Because uh, the, the uh, coal box is hot, the furnace is hot. So we're losing energy absolutely everywhere. And you can see that this system is inefficient. It's energy inefficient. We're on, the only place we're actually extracting energy, actual work, um, with our engine system is actually in the cylinders, but we're losing everything everywhere. You know, with all these lines and boilers and God knows what, and actually into the water, then we have condensers that cool it back down, we're losing energy there, so on and so forth. So this is a very inefficient system. And obviously, the first thing that comes to mind, and this is what happened in the, eight, the, the uh, late 1800s, is the guys got together, or individuals got, you know, started to think, well, if we could just do the combustion side of it inside here, then we can just get rid of all of this. We can get rid of all of this and we can just combust our fuel here, in here. And you think, well, genius, great, engine created. The problem was, was the fuel to use. This was the major stumbling block. They actually used, and I can't remember his name, I'm not very good with history, but there was one guy who was experimenting with trying to make an internal combustion engine. And he literally got coal dust. He got coal dust, ground it into a really fine powder, and then combusted it inside with a, uh, you know, with air inside a cylinder. The problem was with this system is that coal is very, very, very carbon heavy. So that there is a lot of carbon, just loose carbon, in coal. It's a mixture of hydrocarbons and coal and cellulose and blah blah blah. So it, it used to basically, you can see from like steam engines and when you do a barbecue and that, there's a lot of ash and soot and crap that are, um, you know, they're not gases, they're physical um, solid matter. You know, it's the solids, it's powders. And this used to clog up the engine pretty quickly. You do like 20, 30 strokes and buff. You know, it was clogged up so much that you couldn't combust any more coal dust after that. So then basically it was a search for a material, um, a fuel, a volatile fuel that could be burned and would have very, very, very little residual matter left over. And if that residual matter, just say like carbon dioxide and nitrous, uh, nitrogen oxides and blah, 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 if all these um, combustible leftovers were gas, you know, if they were gas, then they could easily be pumped back out of the system. And that was the invention of the internal combustion engine. It was looking for a fuel. And the vet, they started using um, paraffin and butane and stuff like that, and eventually kerosene. And eventually they used what was at the time a waste product, which was petrol and diesel. They were actually um, waste products, you know, they, they when they first started, uh, you know, fracking, not fracking, <laughs> drilling for oil, they were you know they didn't have really that much use for them um, so they, that's what the hunt was for the hunt was for finding a fuel that you could combust that would leave no residual matter left inside and hence today we are left with the petrol and the diesel engines so I hope that makes sense that's what external combustion is and that's a tiny bit of history with no dates on him on how we went from steam engines to internal combustion engines and the definition of external and then internal combustion Hope that made sense and I'll see you in a bit.